I want to thank everyone for being with us this morning. Uh, June, it's hard to believe, but we're already into June. Uh, today, uh, we have a very important announcement to make. But before I make the announcement, I, as I typically like to do, I, I want to recognize the people at the California Department of Justice who make these kinds of announcements possible. Not all of them can be here with us, but uh, some are. And I want to make sure I acknowledge those who've worked uh, on so many of these important issues for Californians. Uh, I'd like to start off by recognizing Melanie Fontis Rayner, who is here with me. She's a special assistant uh, in this office who works on uh, health matters uh, and is an expert on health care matters for this department. Uh, I'd like to recognize in their absence uh, Nick Akers, who is the senior assistant attorney general, uh, who has been leading the consumer a law section of the Department of Justice for quite some time. Uh, Judith Fiorentini, who is the supervising deputy attorney general <clears throat> in the same uh, section, and Michelle Burkhart, uh, deputy attorney general, who has done a lot of the work on the case that we're about to discuss today. And as you can see, standing next to me to my right is someone very important, someone very special, probably the most important reason why we're here today. Uh, Jordan Basilou is someone who can speak from firsthand experience about uh, the things that are critical for Californians to address. And I'm going to let him tell his story after I say a few words. So I want to thank Jordan in advance for being willing to, to stand with us today. California has done a lot on any number of issues. But on health care, there are a few states that compare to California. We expanded Medicaid when we had that opportunity back in 2010 so that more Californians, several million Californians, were able to actually access decent quality health care, including for things like uh, substance abuse disorders, uh, access to medication when necessary for themselves or their family members. On the California, uh, on Covered California, our California exchange under the Affordable Care Act, we made sure to include prescription drug coverage for Californians who applied for health insurance under the Affordable Care Act and that they had access to uh, substance abuse treatment and services under their health plans as well. We have one of the finest uh, prescription drug monitoring programs in America. It's called Cures here in California. We have aggressively investigated and prosecuted those who overprescribe and violated our medication laws uh, not long ago. It's still pending as a case involving Dr. Satandra Kumar Chopra, who out of Modesto's, his offices in Modesto, was prescribing prescription drugs, including opioid drugs, to Californians throughout the state, not just in Modesto, but throughout the state. And that prosecution continues forward. But even through all of those things, there are still six Californians who are dying every day from opioid overdoses and use of uh, substances that could lead to their death. The opioid crisis is devastating our communities throughout the country, and it's killing our loved ones. In 2017, opioids took the lives of more than 70,000 Americans. The truth is the start of this crisis can be traced back to Purdue Pharma, uh, Pharmaceutical or Purdue Pharma and the Sackler family and their pursuit of profits. Purdue and the Sacklers traded the health and well-being of Californians for profit and created an unprecedented national public health crisis in the process. But we will hold them accountable. That's why today... I am announcing a lawsuit against Purdue Pharma, certain of its affiliates, and former officer and board member Dr. Richard S. Sackler for, as we allege, engaging in unlawful practices in the marketing, sale, and distribution of opioids. Our complaint alleges that Purdue Pharma knew as early as the 1990s that one of their drugs, OxyContin, was one of the, uh, was among the most abused opioids in the country. What was their reaction? Well, they doubled the size of their sales force 
the following years. By 2000, they had already been made aware of specific reports made to this company over the abuse and diversion of OxyContin in communities across the United States. But their sales representatives continued to falsely promote OxyContin as a drug that was neither addictive nor subject to withdrawal symptoms. And in 2007, Purdue and a number of its executives pleaded guilty to felony misbranding admitting to illegally promoting OxyContin and paying more than $600 million in penalties, fines, and forfeitures. Despite all that, Purdue continued its aggressive, deceptive marketing campaign, raking in billions of dollars in profits as the opioid epidemic continued to claim lives across this great country. This violated California's consumer protection and public nuisance laws. No one's life or health should be for sale. The California Department of Justice will hold Purdue and Dr. Sackler accountable. Any company in California that thinks that these kind of deceptive tactics are the path to profits will learn that they don't pay. It is time to take action. It is time to hold those responsible, accountable, and it's one of the reasons why Jordan is with us today is to talk about his experience, and fortunately, he is here to talk about it. So let me now ask Jordan Bazalut to tell us his story. Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Jordan Bazalut. I'm here to share my experience with opioids and how they ruined my life and will affect my future. Saying that pain pills with opioids are not addicting is a joke, and a very deadly one. Ignorance like that has killed a lot of people and contributed to the opioid epidemic in our country today. People think, well, it's from a doctor. How bad could it be? People need to know the truth about how dangerous opioids are and what they could be getting themselves into. If I knew I was, gonna, if I knew I was getting into that, I would never would have taken them. I was in a car accident when I was around 18, and I had a bulge disc. And uh, my addiction started with pain pills that were prescribed by me, by my doctor. Every time I went to the doctor, I would get a stronger pill. Sometimes I would even cry to get stronger pills. Soon, I was looking for them out on the street, and I spent every dollar I could to get my hands on them. I overdosed and revived by Narcan four different times. And every time I got out of the hospital, I went back and used the same day. My road to recovery was long one and bumpy. I've been to rehab seven times. The grip that opioids had on me was way too strong. I lost friends and hurt my family because it hurt to see me in that state. Um, I found out that I could get help from Sacramento Native American Health Center. I, uh, I booked an appointment for a few days later, and when I showed up with the, for the appointment with Dr. Farnafar, I was nervous. Even though my life was horrible and ruined by drugs, I was scared to change. But if I wanted to live, I had to quit. It was that black and white. After talking to my doctor for a while, he educated me on some things and prescribed me a medication to help me stay clean. With the combination of my medication with the rehab, and a lot of support from family and friends. I've been able to stay, stay clean for three years. Even though I have that much time, I'm still cleaning up the mess that opioids got me into. I'm in a lot of debt because of my arrests and DUIs. It's going to be hard to pay off because I have very little work experience, and I have two felonies. That makes it even harder to get a job. I live at my parents' house, and I don't have a car, so I'm dependent on them for almost everything. I have not had a meaningful romantic relationship in years, but despite these things, I have hope. Every day, my life gets better and better. I still have bad days, but when I do, I remember that I'm lucky to be alive and to make the best out of my new life. There are way too many people who won't ever get that chance, and I'm so happy that I'm not a statistic to opioids, but I came close many times, and it's crazy to think that it all started with just a couple of pills. And this is why that we are doing this here today. This is very important, and we need to save lives. And people need to know the dangers of opioids. Thank you for your time. I know I've been asked to say a few words in Spanish. Let me say some right now, and then we'll take questions. Uh, 
But I first have to say, uh, when we do press conferences, you see a lot of folks come up, and like me, they'll have prepared notes. Um, Jordan, what I appreciate about your notes is they were all handwritten and with scribbles and scratches. That was you. That wasn't someone who wrote that for you. That was you. Um, and you can tell from from the expressions that was you. So thank you for expressing yourself, especially the personal parts of, about your life. That's very important. Estamos aquí hoy porque estamos anunciando que ya es tiempo de que alguien responsable pague el precio por dejar muchos de nuestros seres queridos en drogados, no solo en drogados de deuda, en drogados con drogas, con las medicaciones que matan, en este caso los opioides. Y sabemos en muchos casos de personas que utilizan estas drogas en maneras que causan no solo dolor, pero muerte. Y una de las compañías que tiene que aceptar responsabilidad por lo que ha hecho es una compañía que se llama Purdue Pharma. Y uno de los uh, ejecutivos de esta compañía, el doctor Richard Sackler, tiene que también tomar responsabilidad por por lo que ha hecho, por las vidas que ha destruido, por las muertes que hemos visto, porque sabemos que muchos de nuestros seres queridos solo quieren aliviarse, solo quieren poder regresar a la escuela o el trabajo, y a veces toman estas, estos medicamentos para poder regresar a, a su vida. Y desafortunadamente caen, caen en la adicción de estas drogas, y muchos nunca se levantan, y terminan muertos. Así que hoy estamos anunciando una demanda en contra de Purdue Pharma y el doctor Richard Sackler por las acciones que tomaron ellos en causar mucho de el, la epidemia que vemos en este momento con el, el uso de las drogas que matan. Y es tiempo de decirles que tienen que tomar cuenta de sus acciones.